Jamie Laser Victory, a son of Brazen Bow, who won on debut, were off the front. So how impressed were you with him? Would he produce that day? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good one. He, uh, he drew a bad barrier and had to go forward. And it's always uh, difficult for a young horse to quicken up twice in a race like that. Um, showed gate speed from the barriers and then found a good kick when they straightened up. So I uh, thought it was a nice win. And uh, he's always sort of shown a bit of ability since he's arrived. Zach was on board. So what was the, the feedback from him? Because outside of having to jump well and get across him, it looked pretty straightforward. Yeah, Zach said he probably peaked on his run a little bit, the last bit. Um, but I think the, the race day experience will uh, will help him. And um, he's had a little while between runs and a trial, so everything's in order. He's got a bit more weight to carry uh, this time round. Any concerns with that at all? Uh, I don't think so. He's only a three-year-old, but um, hopefully he's still got points in hand. So... Um, yeah, we'll be certainly doing our best, but he's gone the right way since his first up run. Young horse with that uh, gate speed, so how much of a, a positive is that that you can get him out of the gates and sort of put him where you want him? I think it's very important here in Hong Kong, um, probably more so at, at Happy Valley than anything, but certainly uh, when a horse has got speed it allows the jockey to find a position and take a bit of bad luck out of the equation. So um, I was a sort of a positive barrier rider when uh, when I was training back in New Zealand and, and uh, it does seem to work well here as well. Zach Hong Kong Hall makes his uh, debut on Saturday afternoon, a, a three-year-old by uh, Charm Spirit. He obviously failed in his first trial over 800 metres because you uh, came off him out of the, the gates. And he's had a few issues, but quickly tell us about him. He's a nice enough horse, um, you know, apart from the couple of little hiccups that we've had with him. He seems quite professional. Um, I jumped him out again recently and, uh, you know, he's going good, so I'm happy with him. Has he been getting better with each and every trial that uh, that he's had? He has. He, he's learning to see in the gates better. He's doing everything better. So, uh, like I said, I'm happy with him. Gate speed, barrier 13 down the straight, rail on the C course, so no false rail. So you're up against the outside rail. How much of a, an asset is that? Uh, it's a massive advantage for sure. And especially with the gate speed he's got, he should just be able to jump and travel in handy to, to, uh, to forward position quite comfortably. What about uh, since the last time we've had you uh, on the uh, coverage, uh, you've been back to Australia and had a, a couple of uh, Group 1 victories. How satisfying was that to go back to Australia and uh, perform like you did on good horses? Yeah, of course, it's good. You know, on the track, obviously, things went well. And off the track, it was good to catch up with everyone. Um, I haven't seen my friends and some family for a long period of time now. And I was able to cover all bases, playing golf, have lunch, seen the house uh, where it's at with the renovation. So uh, to tie it all in and then have a good day um, at the races, it, it was... Uh, it worked out well. Have you got any more plans to ride through any other days of the, the carnival down in Sydney? I'm going to go back on the 1st of April for the Derby Doncaster TJ day, so um, nothing between now and then. Probably a little bit of a different path going into the race, but uh, he was a month between runs and you know he went from 14 to 16 and, and then jumping up to the 2000 with a month between runs. You know, I, I had to make a decision whether to run him or, or to give him possibly a mile trial. I could have gone that way. But I think eight days, um, you know, sort of with a 1400 metre race to just take the freshness out of him and help him sort of get the distance to the 2000 is, is uh, what I decided to do and, and I'm pretty happy with that. He has been impressive in some of his runs so far, we have seen that. Just how much do you like this horse? I mean, what type of feeling does he give you heading into a big race like this? Yeah, look, he's, he's one of those horses that has always been talented he's, and, and he's built like a staying horse, you know, he's long and lean and very clean winded. So. Um, we, 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 it was all about mentally getting him to switch off and getting him into re relax before we could sort of w work out where he was going to take us. So, um, you know, very satisfying that he's now made it to the race and, and we've got him in that frame of mind where um, we can see, you know, how high he can jump now. Luke Smiling Collector going around for uh, Jimmy Ting. It's taken him a, a wee while to recapture some of that good, useful form he showed earlier on, but uh, how have you assessed his last two rides you've been aboard? Uh, look, he's run good races, you know, he's finished, uh, he's, he's closed them off well, he's finished close. Um, he's always been a bit tricky out the gates, he doesn't have much early tactical speed. Um, so he's been getting a bit far back, but he's, he's pulled a low draw, so hopefully we can use that to our advantage and uh, put him in a prominent spot. He's been a horse in the past that has wanted to do a few things wrong, like uh, run off on the, the turn. Is, the, is he getting sort of better and getting away from those bad old days? Yeah, look, yeah, it, his past two runs have shown that it looks like he's put that behind him. Um, there's always a worry of, you know, getting him fired up early on and um, and those habits creeping back in. But uh, he hasn't he hasn't done anything wrong in his past two starts. So uh, yeah, hopefully he's gotten over it and he, he races properly. Is he one of those horses that comes across as a, a bit of a thinker when he sorts to get gets to that point in the race? Uh, I'm not sure if I'd say thinker. Um, it's more early on, 
uh, early on in the race that he does the things wrong that he sort of hasn't been able to finish finish off. But uh, look, his past two runs he hasn't. He's done everything right. Um, so if he can just sort of reproduce one of them, um, then I think he's in with a chance again. We're over the halfway point of the, the season. You've had uh, two winners and five placings from the last five meetings, 16 winners, but a lot of seconds and third. Has that been frustrating for you personally? Yeah, I prefer uh, more winners to seconds, but um, look, hopefully if we can just convert the seconds into winners, then uh, we should be going along all right. Douglas, uh, Dragon's luck in the, the final race. He's building a, a strong resume, uh, three wins from his four starts. Uh, how did you rate that winning performance again off the front last start? It was very tough. He's done everything correctly. Uh, lovely horse to be dealing with, and he's just he's kept on improving. Has he trained on since uh, that win? Has he he's been pleasing you in the mornings? He has. Um, I gave him a slight freshen up, and hence the reason a trial last week. He was very complimentary of him. He had a bit of a blow in the trial, but uh, he's back on track. The only time he was beaten, he got was a little bit slow from the start and got a, a little bit of a squeeze. Has he has he got more strings to his bow this horse than just leading? Do you think? I, I do think so. I, I, th I think just on pure ability, he's been able to get out and dictate. I don't think he's one-dimensional. He doesn't indicate that at track work anyway. Um, but you know why, why ruin a good recipe? At the moment, he's doing things correctly from the front, and um, he's enjoying it. What about carrying weight at the, the top of Class 3? He obviously looks like a reasonably big, strong, robust horse. He's strong enough. Any you know, weight stops train, so there's always a concern when, it, when you, you creep up the top of the handicaps. Uh, but look, uh, there's other things to contend with than, than the weight, and, um, but it is a concern. Quick uh, roundup on, on uh, Russian Emperor from uh, Dubai the other night. How's he come through that uh, run last Saturday? Very well. Uh, it was a super run. I was, <laughs> I was quite taken aback with the way he hit the line. So was Alberto. Uh, he seems to have come out in good order. Um, I've had videos of him at track work and, and, and both trotting up afterwards. So he looks healthy and um, he remains on track. What do you do with him now between uh, now and, I guess, World Cup night? Well, I, I gave him that run purposely to, to get that extra mileage into him and also to allow him to, to see the track. He had the benefit of seeing the settling up area, the parade ring, the track. So he was able to take that all in over the 1800. Um, that, that race will hold him in good stead for the 25th. Uh, he'll, I'll get back there on the 20th and I'll be sitting on him for a turf gallop on the 21st. Um, and that'll be his final, his final piece of work. He's got a few uh, frequent fly points, so this guy. Do you think leaving Hong Kong and getting out to a, a new environment has, has really done him the world of good? It's turned him around. Uh, he was stagnating. Uh, since the day he arrived in Qatar, he, he just blossomed and he was a totally different horse. I was able to get the weight off him. That I've, It's been proven very difficult to do that in Hong Kong without doing the extra gallops and the extra hard yards. And that's very telling on his legs. So um, from the day he stepped off the plane and, and I was able to shed the weight, He's, he's really turned the corner.